record on this computer. Right, maybe we're going to go live here now. Can you still see me all right there, man? Yeah. Yep, I'm good. Yeah. I guess I'll just take a couple of seconds to go live here in the group, man. So just bear with me. All right. Eight minutes late. Don't like being late. You have breakfast today yet? No. I have, mate. I have, of course. See you up from 5 a.m. 5 a.m. starts, dude. What? Couldn't have breakfast at 5 too early. No, not a five. So I was down, I was in the gym for six, and then uh, I was back. I was back up home for seven, um, and then uh, I wrote. Did you see the email uh, I wrote on your <laughs> <laughs> cheesecake bake? I haven't, haven't had a cheesecake since I got home. Oh, uh, really? No, I'm sick of myself. I like the Belfast community. That's us going live now, man. We're good. Yeah, we'll we'll be about twenty seconds ahead of everyone here, just in case you say anything daft, we can cut it off. How long ago here for Savy? <laughs> so says, can you see us live now, mate? Yeah, oh, that's it. I got my screen up here again. Let's see. Yeah. My can you see me all right there? Yep. Can you see me? No. No? <laughs> no. Oh, no. Um. Hold on, I can go into the I can go into the actual chat. Right, bud. So what's the story? All good. Um, All good. That's funny stuff coaching for the morning. Yep. So. Happy days, mate. Happy days. So Owen, tell us this, mate, right? You've been um you've been knocking about for quite a while now. Did you know from a very young age that you wanted to do something in fitness? Something I think with sport really. Um and we grew up playing Gilly Carter and Soccer and just being out and about all the time and probably my daddy's a PE teacher too so that was probably the first idea in my head um, but then I was warned against being a teacher by, by both my mum and daddy um, okay. just anything to do with sport I didn't know exactly what it was I thought it might have been physio something along those lines and then I got the opportunity to work with Dan McCaffrey in the limits and then it just sort of kicked off from there and that was when I realised right, this, is, this could be something here Cool, cool. So how did that how did that come about? How did uh, how did you end up working there? So my mummy was training with Dan at the, at the start. This was about maybe four years ago, a bit more now. Right. Um, I was like fourth or fifth year in school, like, and I I stopped my mummy's training, and then I started training with him, um, doing his, his boot camp classes back in La Salle and um, community center up in uh, uh, can't can't remember where it is, but up near Lagmore anyway. Uh-huh. Uh, Mount Eagles, Mount Eagles Community yes. Centre, yep. and then um, trained the way with him, and then I got offered just to sort of, I think mommy said, them, do you need anyone to, to give you a hand sort of thing? And what, and age, then, what age were you then? Fifteen maybe. Right, holy 15, shit. Fifteen. Right. Um, and then just started coming in, shadow him, there was a wee kid sitting in the corner, didn't wouldn't open my mouth, watching everyone go past, and then just ended up taking a few wee kids sessions, sort of kids fit, take, uh, but then Benny started coaching sessions then when I was about 16. Uh-huh. And then I just through school, got my level two when I was in school and then got on the use once I finished school. And then it just all kicked off from there. Kicked off from there. Right, okay. And I, I take it it was Dan that sort of referred you to us? I'd seen a few things on Facebook. Um, and then Dan had mentioned it, yeah. And 
I was actually going up the coaches session. I just came up whenever I clicked on the page or our chat. Um, I was like, are you free for a call at any stage? And I was like, yeah, I'm coaching the session here. Can you get me at 11? And then I was on the phone. And then the next day, paying off the, the, the deposit and stuff, and then get signed up to the coach. I think that was August 2016. 17, 17. Right, okay. So e- even though you were already, you know, you were already one of the more experienced ones on the course because, you know, um, you had been coaching for a while and you yeah. were still really, really young, actually. It's, it's, it's now that I think back on it, you know, like, what do you do now? Wonder. Holy shit, dude. And, and, like, you know, you've done so much already in the fitness industry, but yet and all, you're still so young. That's, that's unreal, mate. Um, so, right, dude, so right now, right, you're um, coaching, you know, young athletes and uh you know in your own time you've got your own me coaching academy going on and you're also working with you know i and i know a lot of dance clients you know a lot of them are all older like there's a whole range of clients or like how are you finding that at the minute um i'm loving it it's unreal uh obviously the the training the athletes i think that's what really gets me going that's what i love doing but i think just coaching in general and being able to you get a different sort of buzz from coaching different people. Um, so, like, the No Limits clients, you go in and, like, being at the start, it was a wee bit intimidating, being, like, there's people there maybe, like, over twice my age, like, yeah. and like, telling them, like, coaching them through a session, helping them out and telling them what to do. And it's, it can be a bit intimidating at the start, but um, just once you get to know them, it's, it's, it's a big crack, like, and you, you get to have a laugh with them and something different that you don't you don't get to do every day. So, um, yeah, every, every session's different and, I know, it's, it's class, like. <laughs> class, mate. So, see with the, I know you're doing some online stuff as well. Like, where yeah. are you hoping, like, is that what you're hoping to sort of the drive towards going online? Or do you want to sort of, you know, what way, what's your plans for escalating the academy? So, long term, I would like to be in with a professional team somewhere down the line. Um, mm-hmm. But at the same time, I'd like to have my own sort of academy, um, it, whether it be online or in person. Um, I, I love in person, I think it's, it's hard to beat coaching someone face to face. Yeah. Um, but whether it be online or, or in person, I want to have that on the side. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm definitely working with some sort of sports team, whether it's Gaelic team, rugby team, soccer team, whatever. Um, that's the, the, the long term plan. Maybe looking probably 15, 20 years down the line. Um, but yeah, with the with the group at the minute, uh, I just found with the the GAA is probably my main sort of aim. So I think with the, the online, a, a way bit bigger reach there. Um, mm. just, and it, are you still playing yourself? Still playing myself, yeah. Right, um, you still you still playing for Antrim or what's going uh, on? What's going on? That, no, uh, I was in the Antrim seniors at the start of the year, mm-hmm. and then went um, back down to the under twenties, and then on the twenty competitions wrapped up. So just playing for some goals at the minute, some goals seniors. Awesome, awesome. Did you just eat too much cheesecake? Is that what happened? That was probably what it was, yeah, mate. Got a <laughs> too much cheesecake, too many pints. <laughs> sure, you're 20, you're allowed cheesecake and pints, that's where it goes, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely class, mate. So here, tell me this here, right? You know, um, let's say for uh, people watching this here, now, nah, I mean, there's probably uh, a lot of young guys watching this, a lot of young guys and girls, um, and they're possibly thinking about, you know, stepping into the fitness industry uh, you know at a very young age as well like what's the first piece of advice you would give someone who's late teens early 20s to kick start their career in fitness uh, probably get get an idea of what what you actually have to do and um, whether it be going in and shadowing someone or going in and watching a few sessions even going in and taking part in a couple of sessions mm-hmm. uh, realizing what what actually goes on um like we were just chatting there, you said you're you're up at five o'clock this morning. You're in the gym. You're back and you're back and forward. Um, it was up to self. It was in coaching for six. It's not all the sort of the glamour side. Like if you're some days you want to be lying, like but you're you're up coaching early doors. Um, just seeing what really it involves and making sure it's the right thing for you because it may not be too rewarding straight away, but yeah, yeah, long, long term if it's if you enjoy it, you and you're sticking at it, then it you'll you'll reap the rewards of it, like. Yeah, I, I think that's definitely important for, you know, young people to realize because there is this sort of perception and it's, I, I think a lot of it comes down to what people see online as well. You know, they, they see people shredded online and saying, they, saying that they make tons of money online or whatever it is. 
and they have this perception about the fitness industry that it's easy work. Yeah. Right. And then they get into the fitness industry and they realize, you know, there's early starts and there's long days and you, you actually got to do the work in order to get the clients on board. Like people don't just fall at your feet. Do you know, so I, I think uh, it's good for young people to, like you say, get that experience first because I mean, I don't know about you, but I trained my first load of clients for absolutely free. Like yeah. you, you were training people when you were 15, probably just for the crack, were you? Yeah. Yeah. I was actually at a workshop at the weekend and I was hanging back to uni in September and I have a placement year for, I'm doing sports science um, as a placement year and I want to get into sort of strength conditioning um, placement. Uh -huh. I to one of the coaches, he's, a, he's been involved in rugby, strength conditioning. Yeah. I said, Listen, what's, like, if I'm going about trying to get a good placement, what's my best way? And he was saying, well, you're an athlete, chances are your friends are athletes, get them in the door, get training your friends, um, write, make notes on everything that's happening what programs you're doing, how it worked out, test, retest, and when it comes to it, be able to say, here, I've, for free, for the past two years, I've coached such and such, this is what I've found. So, mm -hmm. even even still, like, if I'm looking at the experience that I need, I still, still having the, if it means taking people on now, in the short term, for free, to work out in the long term, then you can you still want to do it, like. Yeah, it's essentially, you know, strength and conditioning, it's, you know, it's a different market altogether. Yeah. Like if we're talking about the difference between what you're doing with the academy and let's say Dan's clients at No Limits, I mean one is general population, and the next is athletes. There's a whole there's a whole lot more complexity yeah. that comes with training athletes. And again, I think a lot of people don't realise that either. Yeah, I think now the sort of strength and conditioning scene is in. It's the in scene in the yeah. fitness industry, and a lot of people want to get into it. But again, I think sometimes that. Uh, especially a lot of young people don't realize the amount of work that actually goes into building something like that and the amount of like you know you're, you're going back to school after how many years now I've been out of school two years now so you're out of school two years and now you're going back to upscale yourself further to uh, get into something that you've always been really passionate about do you know yes. what I'm saying so I mean how long how long is that degree going to take for four years for you, do you know what I mean? Like it's, it, it's not. I think it's so easy for people now to turn around and say, oh, "I want to be, uh, I want to coach athletes, right?" But yeah. do you know the like? I suppose, right across the fitness industry, like, do you know the amount of work that goes into training athletes? Do you know the amount of work that goes into owning a gym? And, yeah, and, you know, coaching people who are general population. Like, it's it's not easy. And I think the great thing is that we don't actually tell people it's an easy thing to do. Yeah. Um, and you know, I, I see it a lot in the fitness industry now where people are selling the dream, which yeah. is, you know, which is okay, but they're not really giving people the reality on the other end. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. I can remember even saying when I first started getting involved with Dan and seeing how everything was going, I was like, okay, I'd, I'd love doing a gym. I'd love doing a gym. But the more I'm sort of around it and seeing the realities of it, I'm thinking that's, that's not for me. Like maybe down the line in the future, way down the line it may be, but so for, for now, it's like that's that's, that's yeah. Um, but yeah, like you said, like it's it's just understanding what the reality is, and it's yeah. not all. It's not all the. It's amazing. It's rewarding. It's probably the most rewarding job out there. Yeah. Um, but you, there is the sort of. It's not all you see on Instagram and Facebook and all the things. Yeah, but let me ask this here, right? <clears throat> you, know, you you've had Dan with you for. Uh, we, we should say to people, so it's uh, Dan McCaffrey we're talking about here. He owns No Limits in West Belfast. So you've had, you know, Dan as a mentor, essentially. Yeah. Uh, from, again, from a very young age. Like, how important has that been for your own development? Massive. Uh, just at the start, like, my whole coaching philosophy has probably come from his as well. It's like he yeah. was shaped a lot by sort of Dan John and um, all that sort of stuff. So that's yeah. where I sort of just taken into um, like we had a conversation like I was saying something I was speaking to my client in the class and he sort of like, paused and looked at me like, <laughs> the exact same way I would have talked to him I was like <laughs> um, just because I spent so much time around him watching him um, coaching sessions with him and stuff but yeah even like the like personal development said he's been big into that the past sort of three four years yeah um, really sharp going to America with him and stuff and he, that even that side of things is even though I've slipped away from it a wee bit the past wee while, but it has, uh, like, the, I think the two years that I've finished, that I've come out of school, just the, ma the maturity and everything, everything else that came with it, like, um, just from spending near enough every day with, 
with Dan and in the in the limits like it's just taking another step like class man class absolutely love it um so I I actually you know I wrote an email earlier and I'm sure you've heard this term before entrepreneur yeah right so um I kind of want to get this message across to people let's say you know not everyone on here is going to go and open their own gym yeah some people may go and work for someone else which you've done for the past five years now right but within working for someone else you have excelled and not only that not only have you excelled yourself you've also excelled the business as well right so how important is it for uh people who are you know not going to open the gym but are going to go and work for someone else how important is it for them to become an entrepreneur, meaning that they have to do their 100% best in order to, you know, progress themselves? Um, it's massive. Uh, the way the way we sort of look at it, uh, Dan's in the background sort of thing. So we, we're the ones who are coaching the sessions. We're the ones everyone's coming and seeing. So we, we're sort of a reflection of, of No Limits. So yeah. everyone has to sort of drive the business on and just making yourself... Like up, continue upskilling yourself, making you the best coach possible is going to be, be able to deliver better sessions, give people a better service, and it, it'll stand by both you, the business, everyone in the gym, and it'll stand by them in the long term. And you're always looking for that continual improvement. Class, mate, class. So, here, you know, in terms of uh, training resources for people watching this now, like, what, what, are, you, what are you following at the minute? Um, you know, you said you were on a course at the weekend. What was the course yeah. you were doing? Like, uh, what style of training are you following at the minute as well? Um, I was on this, it was a speed workshop, a speed course from Sam Portland. Uh -huh. um, he's like a rugby sort of, like a, he does consultations with rugby clubs and stuff. He doesn't actually work for a rugby club, but that's he has his own, has his own side business. And any, anyone in the rugby scene wants him in, they'll come in, look at everything, sort it all out. Mm -hmm. uh, Basically, just covering sprint technique and just learning and learning a new skill, learning sprinting as a skill. Um, a lot of the stuff I follow on Instagram is sort of rugby based and around Australia, um, New Zealand, that sort of place. Uh, just over there seems to be a wee bit further ahead. And um, so, a lot of the coaches that I know in Ireland, so Peter Donnelly from Tyrone, would be probably the standout strength conditioning coach in, in, in Ireland. They're also there anyway. Um, right. A lot of his stuff was coming from those boys, so it was kind of on the similar sort of track. Um, obviously, went through Elite with my personal training stuff, and then just picking up wee things. Generally, if you go on the one page and it's gone, it leads into another, leads into another, leads into another. So, mm -hmm. bank of everything, it's, it's built up over the past wee way. Class, mate. Class. So, tell me this here, right? You, you had sort of you know, mentioned you'd done your course at Elite. Like, what yeah. were the specific results from the course that sort of helped you progress the way you have? A um, couple of things. So obviously, went into the course thinking, right, I've been coaching a wee while here. It'll just be a case of going through, I'll get my, do my, do my wee exams, get my piece of paper and I'll be me sorted. But I think from the, the first night I walked in, I was like, oh shit, this is, this is different. This is different. Um, and just, it, it, it constantly got you thinking and we said it before, we said, I remember the last live we did? It's like you think yeah. you know something and then you realise how much you actually don't know. Yeah, yeah. You think you're here, and then you're like, "Oh shit, I'm here." Up and down, up and down. Yeah. Um, and I was just the same again at the same again at the weekend. Like I went into that course thinking, right, I know a wee bit here, but just the way he spoke, I was like, "Fuck, I need to go back and learn all this." And yeah, yeah. Um. So yeah, obviously, met a lot of new people, got through the course, learned so much more, different techniques, different methods of training, and um, just things that I wouldn't probably wouldn't have looked into myself if it wasn't in that sort of environment. Mm -hmm. um, and just open, open my mind up to what, like, how many different things there is and how many different possibilities. And yeah, just, that was probably the biggest thing. You, you, you think you know something, but then you realize you, you, you don't really know. There's always a lot more to put in the rabbit hole and find out. Class, mate. Absolutely class. Um, yeah, love that, mate. So I think you just touched on, you know, the the absolute right word there, which is environment, you know, which, again, I, I know you guys are a lot like us where you place yourselves in a learning environment and, you know, a positive environment as well. And, 
you know, for me, probably one of the biggest disappointments I would say for me about the, you know, what I see in the fitness industry is that people could, you know, get themselves in this sort of environment where it's not like that. And, you know, it can be very egotistical and stuff. And, you know, I think we all have to sit back and look at ourselves and go, you know, how, how much can I learn from not people, not even, it doesn't even have to be someone like Dan John. It can be someone who's right next to you. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? And that's what I absolutely love about you guys at No Limits as well, is that you have, you have created that environment, which is fucking absolutely awesome, man. Absolutely. So here, I um, suppose one, one last piece of advice for you know someone coming through in the fitness industry. Um, you know, like what, what would you say to them in order to, in order to get them started even? You know, let's say they're in a career they don't want, they don't want to be at the minute, um, or let's say they're possibly going to university or they don't want to be there like you know what sort of message would you give to that person um that there's, there's plenty of time uh everyone seems to be in a, in a hurry to do something but there, there's plenty of time to get it done uh, it means taking a taking a year taking uh, the part-time course six months or the six months something yeah like yeah five and a half actually yeah five and a half. like it's a it's a short period of time if if you give it a go, it might not work out. It might be the best thing in the world for you. Um, but there's, there's no harm in giving it a go. Um, you can always course correct. Dan even said to me, he's against me going back to uni. Yeah. He, he, I don't need it. But he says, listen, go do it. And if you, if you need the course correct, course correct. Um, so That's yeah, it. Try and figure out. Try as many things you can. Figure out what you enjoy, what you want to do. And go for it. Love it, mate. Love it. Thank you very much, buddy, for coming on today. No worries. Thanks for having me. Yep. It's been absolutely epic, dude. Thanks again. No worries. Have a good one. You too, mate. See you soon. Take care. Bye.